This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Nexus 7. This is the second generation Nexus 7, 2013 edition. Google didn't come up with a new name for it, so that's the best we can do in trying to describe this. But it has a really nice display, the highest resolution 7-inch display you're going to find on a tablet right now. Nice industrial design, fast. We're going to look at it now. So here it is, the Google Nexus 7 Take 2. Definitely some improvements here. First off, you can see it's a little bit narrower. If you're at all familiar with the previous generation Nexus, I'm not so much palming a basketball like I was before I can get my hands around this more. Granted, I do have large hands, but it's a little bit narrower, but it's also a little taller. They, they still needed as much room, apparently, for the internals, so they had to, well, stretch it out somewhere. So now you've got kind of Franken-tablet here, very long, very narrow kind of design. It's a little bit thinner than the older Nexus 7 too, and it's also, in general, just a very thin and nice looking tablet overall. Not stunning, not wow design, but minimalist, clean, black, uh, nothing wrong with it at all. Take a look on the back here, and plastic, slightly like soft touch, but not nearly as soft touch, rubbery, and stippled like the past Nexus 7, which we'll compare it to in a minute. One real important thing up here, though, is the camera. Now we get a rear camera, 5 megapixel, and it's not bad either. There are also stereo speakers. There's grill here by the micro USB port, which is also capable of doing video display out. This is not MHL. This is the new slim port design here, so that uses a different kind of connector if you actually want to connect it to a monitor, but we'll talk about the port a little bit more later when it comes to USB and USB host functionality, but charging, copying data, primary port purpose of that port right there. Up top here, another speaker grill, and it uses a software virtual surround sound that's pretty effective. Really loud tablet. Usually 7-inch tablets are pretty quiet. The old Nexus 7 was not much to write home about. This one's definitely better. And of course, we have our nice, now right side up, Nexus logo that you can see as we flash it in the light a little bit. Headphone jack up top, 3.5 millimeter combo audio. And on the side, just in the same place as it was on the last Nexus 7, we have our volume controls right here, and that's our power button. And that's it for our controls. Pretty simple stuff. This tablet is made by Asus, just as was the last generation Nexus 7. And as you can see, it has wide viewing angles, really nice colors, works in portrait and landscape mode. You'd probably be using this more in portrait when reading books and landscape when looking at web pages and playing games. But as you can see, really colorful, bright, sharp, high contrast display. Wow! Nice, nice, nice display. 1920 by 1200. This is one of the highest resolution tablets in general on the market. There are a couple of full HD Android tablets and, of course, the Retina iPad. But in 7-inch tablet, this is the highest resolution you're going to find right now. So pretty nice, especially given that it starts at 229, which is fairly reasonable. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive than the outgoing Nexus 7, but you know, components do cost some money. So that's the 16 gig Wi-Fi version for that price. You can also get it with 32 gigs of storage for 269 and there will be a 4G LTE version available in the US that will be compatible with multiple carriers unlocked so you can put your own SIM card in there. This runs pure Android. That's what you would expect of a Nexus product. We have our software control buttons down here. No capacitive hardware buttons whatsoever. Android 4.3 now, out of the box, actually, the first thing I wanted to do before I even finished setting up my account was to update itself to 4.3. Apparently, right now it has 4.2 in it, but as soon as you set it up, it's going to upload. But you know how it is. You take a tablet out of the box, and it wants to play with itself more than you at first, it seems. Once you get that going, 4.3, and then you put all your stuff on there, and perfect, clean Android. Little launcher down here for commonly used applications. Touch the center button. You get to all of your apps. Very fast, clean experience. Again, pure vanilla Android 4.3 on here. You can put your own launcher if you want, but there's no manufacturer customizations, no UI overlays, nothing. If you swipe down over here, you have quick access some, to some of your basic settings, which is handy dandy, and you can get notifications by swiping down on the other side over here if there are indeed notifications waiting for you. The tablet runs on a 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 CPU. That's the same quad-core 1.5 GHz CPU we've seen in the Sony Xperia Tablet Z, for example. And that's a fast CPU. We saw it in some of last year's high-end smartphones. So far, we're not seeing anything quicker inside of tablets. And it benchmarks very well, and it's very quick. And Android 4.3 has some OpenGL optimizations that should help games perform even better and the UI itself. So absolutely no complaints about speed. Usually with a Nexus device we don't have any complaints about speed because it's just running bare bones pure Android on a pretty decent hardware platform. 
The previous generation Nexus 7 seemed to get a little worse with every firmware update that came over the air with every new version of Google Android. That's pretty weird. Usually Nexuses don't do that. The smartphones haven't. The Nexus 10 hasn't. So we hope that this one's going to fare better. But certainly it feels a whole lot faster than my older Nexus 7. And let's compare them right now. So here we have the new guy all in black, and this is the original Nexus 7 over here, and you can see the difference in thickness. It's noticeably thinner than the latest Nexus 7, which we expect devices do tend to get thinner and smaller. Now in terms of height, you can see the difference right here, with the new model being taller. Because they had to, like I said, cram those electronics in somewhere, but as we flip them around, you can see that it is considerably narrower. So it's just a little difference in thickness, but it's just enough to increase the comfort level when holding it. And we take a look at the backs. We have the plain boring black here. Not bad, like I said, but nothing too exciting going on. And we have this old, older Nexus's stippled, nice soft touch back. I kind of like this better, a little bit more interesting and really grippy, easy to hold on to. Now in terms of speed, it benchmarks quite well and significantly faster than the outgoing Nexus 7. Quadrant 5339. Actually, I'm surprised. I thought that would be closer to the 7000 number that we've seen for some other S4 Pros, but that's what it is. Maybe that's something to do with the version of Android and Quadrant. On Tutu, a very respectable 19,981. Sun Spider, where lower numbers are better, it scored 1,058, and that's with the Chrome web browser, right? There we got our shortcut to Chrome. This is a pure Google device. You're just going to get the Chrome web browser now. 3D Mark Ice Storm, 11,660, which is very, very good. And for the demo, we got 43.8 frames per second, so very nice and fast on graphics. Competes nicely, even with the Samsung Galaxy Note 8.0, which is one of the faster small tablets on the market, I have to say, in terms of pure benchmark, so good going there. The tablet has dual band Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn, Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, and it also has a front video chat camera. Now, both of these cameras are pretty capable, so that's a, that's a nice thing, especially for a smaller tablet, a budget tablet, and that's something that sets it apart from the Kindle Fires. What sets this apart from the iPad Mini is the really high quality, high resolution display you've got here. Obviously, the Mini just has a standard resolution display, so things look much sharper. You can see how gorgeous just my desktop picture looks. And I have some other full HD wallpapers I use where actually once they're shrunk down to this size here, they're almost too sharp. Say things that have a lot of leaves, it almost becomes noisy looking to see so much detail on a screen. It's a good problem to have, to be honest. If you want to take a look at something like books or magazines, now first we're going to look at magazines because that's really something that's pretty impressive here. Uh, magazines on a 7-inch display are often just really hard to read because everything is awful tiny. This display is so sharp, I can actually read it. Now granted, Google Play magazines often do a good job of formatting for the screen size that you're using right here, but really, really nice looking here. And Again, the text is readable, it's doable, and pin sharp. So nice experience there. And next we'll take a look at books. Now obviously a 7-inch form factor is really good for reading. It feels like a book. And you can see how nice and neutral white the screen is. And the, the text, my gosh, really, really, really sharp. It's just an awesome little guy to read on. No staircasing on the text, no aliasing of any kind. Even illustrations look just really nice. It's old engraving plate style illustration, so definitely good for reading books, and in that respect better than the iPad mini in terms of text sharpness that you're getting. Contrast levels are good, so are black levels. You can see the blacks look quite black right here, and uh, it's obvious in a night scene like this, the aspect ratio is well suited to movies. You're not going to have too much in the way of black bars. And you can hear the speakers in this too because they're un unusually loud. And the stereo separation actually is good. We have our volume, we'll move it up to about 75% for a 7 inch tablet. That's good. This is a full 1080p MPEG 4 trailer.
So also, if you don't mind looking at, a, relatively speaking, a small screen, you're going to get a really nice experience here in terms of contrast, colors, and brightness if you're going to watch movies. You can use Netflix with this if you want as well. Obviously, other streaming services like Crackle, too. The processor is definitely up to the task of handling it. One important thing to note, uh, you know, Google just hates removable storage. They really seem to. So there is no SD card slot on this guy. So get it with the amount of storage that you actually think you're going to need because it's pretty hard to actually find a way to expand that. One thing you can do is use USB flash drives. This does support USB hosts, but again, Google hates removable storage. And as we noted with the Nexus 10, the driver is not in place to do USB mass storage. So we have Nexus Media Importer right here. It's pretty cheap. It's like $1.99 or... $2.99 on the Google Play Store, and that will give you support for USB flash drives. So you just get yourself a little USB on-the-go dongle adapter, and you can use those. But obviously, you know, nobody wants to walk around with the tail hanging, so to speak. You probably just want to put most of your content on internal storage. The USB host port does work with things like game controllers. No software required. We tested out with a PlayStation-style Logitech controller, and it worked just fine in games. And speaking of games, we're going to test out Real Racing 3 so you can see how it does. So now we're going to test out a race in Real Racing 3. Load time is pretty good there. Looks pretty. Looks sharp. Looks colorful. We have our rear view mirrors working. And our right hand drive car. Very smooth, even with a lot of cars on the track. And going around this curve, we'll see how the frame rates are, because this is where some androids sometimes have problems, and it did just fine there. Playing very smoothly, very easy to control. Accelerometer works nicely on it. Easy thing to hold when gaming. This only weighs 12 ounces, so it's not too heavy. There is Real Racing 3, complete with windshield damage. Now that I have body blocked a bunch of cars, running on the second generation Nexus 7 Android tablet. The camera is actually pretty capable. 5 megapixel camera. Now that's not super duper impressive in terms of resolution there, but it actually does a reasonably good job of white balance, contrast, colors, that kind of thing. And you can see it has tapped to focus. And this is Google's uh, UI right here, so we're a little too close, so it's red right now. But you press and hold, and then you move up to this. It's just not the easiest thing to control in the world, but you can actually get to your settings, basic settings right here. Shutter timer white balance, scene control, and we want to take a picture. You can just tap to focus to make sure it's focused. Well, let's choose Ernie's face. And that's quick enough. And it does the panorama and the 360 panoramas as well. And obviously you can switch between the front and back cameras. And you can switch to video mode too. And as you see, touch to take a photo while recording video so you can do both at once. And if we touch and hold here, you can see you have some basic settings available yet again. And here's our very basic settings right here. Time lapse, quality, we can go all the way up to 1080p. And whether we want location on. So now we're shooting a great video of Ernie. And we're going to tap to take a picture. You can see it's a pretty light tablet. You have to be careful not to bounce it around when you actually hit that button, but it works just fine. So now we have our many pictures of our boat toy and our video. That's good audio quality there. And now here's a funny little thing. Sometimes I've noticed after exiting an application that the audio continues on. This is a little bug with our Nexus 7 here. I'm sure that'll get addressed with a firmware update. Uh, manually killing applications or restarting makes it stop doing that. Meanwhile, we have some nice background music for our little chat here. So now we've swiped real racing away and we have happy silence again. 
funny, funny thing. Uh, actually, an email came in in the middle of the night, and Real Racing had been running in the background previously, and it started Real Racing up in the middle of the night, rip-roaring with the engines. So, yeah, that's a bug that does need to be fixed. How about battery life? This has a 3950 milliamp battery that Google says is good for nine hours on a charge, and it supports Qi wireless charging, too, which is nice. And so far, they have been on target. The battery life has been good on this. I'd say we've been getting around eight to eight and a half hours of actual usage time. That's with the brightness set to two thirds up. It does have automatic brightness, but I tend to like things a little brighter, so I ride it a little bit higher. And that's with Wi Fi on and a mix of use, doing things like streaming some YouTube videos, playing some Netflix, reading a book, reading a magazine, checking email, doing the web, those kind of things, and a little bit of gaming too. Now, if you do a lot of gaming, the battery life will be considerably shorter. So that's the Nexus 7, again, made by ASUS, marketed by Google, available now starting at $229. Certainly a very nice 7-inch tablet for the price, if you're looking for a 7-inch tablet, that is. You really can't beat the display here. Nice build quality, good performance, pure Android. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to visit our website to read the full review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.